And your heart starts pounding. I'm getting all nervous now. Come on, Wynn, come on back. Moment of truth, how good did I do? Press K to pause and play YouTube videos. If I'm moving too fast with the text, just hit that K button and push it again to play. motion sickness go ahead and skip to 210 on the time mark you can grab that scroll and put it wherever you want however if you like steep banking motorcycle turns and flying like this then by all means join right along so as I said the engines running just awesome this is a place where I took off it's kind of fun getting up in the air you guys see all the perspective you can see where they hit the mud at the bottom of the lake as you can see the carburetor is doing awesome I'm really impressed and pleased with how it's turning out my goal here is to do a little bit of messing around. I'm supposed to meet up with a couple of buddies. And uh, you see those streamers, it's blowing pretty hard. They like to fly when there's just no wind. The th fun thing about flying when there is wind, when you face into the wind, you can climb like crazy. Or you can get up like on a ridge or a steep thing like this. And just kind of hang in the air. It's pretty fun. Um, you can also do really short takeoff and landings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask this guy if it's okay to come through. I take off on this. Can I go over you? Is that okay? It's tough to see on the GoPro camera, but he gave me a big thumbs up. So let's see. Go around and try it and see how it goes. So as I bank around, look at that slope right there. So all the air's moving from the lake to here. So it's hard to get down, but it's kind of fun. You just put your hands up off the brakes so that you just kind of sink through and uh, just come in easy. So the goal is to get down here in the dirt and then get close but not fly directly over him. You know, under promise, over deliver kind of stuff. So this kayak is populated. I don't have annual inspections on this. Can't fly over a populated kayak. So I'm just going to get close and then bank to the right here. So that's the end of flight uh, three actually. There's another touch and go that I didn't show. Just because it's the same thing. Anyway, the police show up after I fly over the kayak, so I'm like, did they uh, call the police on here? No, you know, you never know. So that's my truck. Uh, when I get close, you can see the streamer. I always got to check on that on a technical takeoff and landing like this. When it's like this, I can land sideways across that levee, and it's no big deal. Uh, but if it drops, as you're going to see happen on me right when I'm landing, then I got to land or turn and go like that. I want to do a bunch of uh, flying through here. You'll remember from the takeoff, I had where I had to wait for the wind to come on in order to take off on that short takeoff. Uh, so it's on and off, but it's pretty smooth. The police are still watching for me. I don't know what the deal is. I really watch where I'm flying and keep my nose clean, but people on the ground, they don't have the same perspective, and it's easy to make them look like they're over something that they're not. So here's the end of flight number three. I did four flights, and on the fourth flight, the wind drops, that little uh, wind socket or stream or whatnot. This drops and I come in really hot. But we'll see how that goes, we'll see in a minute. So this was supposed to be a good landing, but then, and, and I leave my motor running just kind of like aircraft carrier style. You know, like you rev up your jet engine as you're landing, and that way you've got the RPMs to take off. On this one I had to get into the gas because the wind kind of dropped. And then all of a sudden, as I'm into the gas, it takes off. The police are gone. It's kind of a bummer. I would have liked to have said hi to them and see if somebody called on me or not. A lot of times, they just don't care, especially if there's no jurisdiction on something like that. I believe this is my final approach where I'm going to land. And as I'm coming in, I'm close to the pole. It's 
kind of sketchy. I'm expecting more wind, but look how fast I'm going. So I see the streamers are down, so I turn left and just kind of salvage it the best that I can. Thanks for flying Brian's Mobile One Airways, and uh, we'll see you again soon. It came in a little bit hot. So that's my address right there, Brian's Mobile One, P.O. Box 282, Cedar Valley, Utah. Let's pop this open. That's cool. Brian, thanks for all the hours of fun education videos you share with us. We need more. We need lots more just like you. Well, hopefully if I'm being a good example, that works out. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. He says, I love how lighthearted and humorous you are. And uh, I just compensate because I've been through a lot. <laughs> It says uh, Lake from Kentucky. It's a lot easier for me to be lighthearted and humorous and fun when I've got the support from uh, viewers like you. So I really appreciate that. Thank you and I mean it. All right, soapbox preachy time. Some guys might look at this and be like, love, oh, that's hippie stuff. Love is the most powerful thing in the world. There are two motivating forces in this world when it comes to people and one's more powerful than the other. One's fear, I'm afraid something's gonna happen if I don't do something, and the other one's love. Because I love somebody, I'm gonna make something happen, whether they're there or not. Fear only works when you know, your dictator or your boss or whoever's present, because you're afraid you get fired. But love makes stuff happen. It makes people cross oceans, climb mountains, go to all kinds of great distances. I look at love the same way that I look at high voltage electricity or any other kind of powerful force. Love is a powerful, powerful thing. If you love what you do, there's no stopping you. So when I see something like that, I love it.